And yep, I got loads of things too. This hang, yeah, we are now. Yep. Okay, so welcome everybody. This is Chattering with Nicholas Vince, and we're doing the original versus remake show where we're going to be talking about the fly. Um, and I am joined by some wonderful gentlemen who I will introduce you to in a few moments. Uh, before I do, I just want to give you some news and stuff I've been up to and what I'm going to be doing on the show for the rest of March. Okay, so there's no show next weekend because I'm going to be appearing live uh, as the MC for a thing called Screen Rebels. I'll put the link up and I'll put it up on Facebook uh, fairly soon after this show finishes. Um, Screen Rebels is great. What the guys do is they get readings of uh, unmade short films. Um, it's great for the actors and it's great for the audience. It, the last time I was there, I've been to one of these um, and really, really enjoyed it. And there's some real writing and acting talent going on there. It was very interesting. So next weekend, there'll be no show, but um, you, you're in London and want to come along and meet me and say hello and watch these guys uh, do stuff. It was really quite crowded. At least 60 or 70 people there um, the last time. So get there early and that's 6.30 and I'll put the details up. Um, in a couple of weeks' time, I'm going to be doing another uh, remake versus original, and that's going to be, I've chosen to look at Fright Night. Now, the, I think one of the things that's really interesting about the comparing the two versions of The Fly and the remake of the original from Fright Night is that Fright Night is definitely a remake. I would say that this fly is something different, which we'll come on to in a few moments. But that's what I'm going to be doing in a couple of weeks' time. Um, and I do. So these are the two movies that I'm talking about. So we're talking about this one and that one, just to make sure. So if you have a chance to look at those, please come and join me. The week after, <coughs> on March the 22nd, I'm going to be t joined by a gentleman called Tim Dry. And I'm going to be joined by his publisher, who is Simon Marshall Jones. And we're going to be talking about Tim's new book, Ricochet. Um, and I think you probably wouldn't possibly be able to see, but yeah, there is, I'm, I'm quoted on the back cover of that one. Um, so I got an advanced copy of it. It's a great book. It's really fun, interesting, weird. It is a really weird book, um, but funny and dark and really interesting. Um, Tim actually read an extract from it at, on the Christmas show, for the uh, Soska Cenobite Christmas show. Um, so that's going to be on the 22nd of March. Um, so yeah, that's... Just make sure I've got everything. Yeah, so no show next week, but you can meet me in person live, happy to chat to anybody who turns up and just come along and say hello to me. Um, but we will be back doing an original versus remake for Fright Night in two weeks' time, and then... Uh, you can come and join us and have a chat with Tim Dry and Simon, Simon uh, his publisher. Cool. All right. So I'm now going to um, ask gentlemen to introduce themselves. We'll just take it one at a time, um, starting from the outside. And we're going to start with Derek. If you'd just like to say a little bit about yourself, Derek. Uh, hello. Hello. My name is Derek. Uh, uh, again, I uh, live uh, in uh, Kansas in the United States, 38 years old, and... Uh, working really hard uh, and taking care of my family. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed, Derek. You've joined us before. Thank you. Nice to have you aboard again. And this is Don. Hi, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm Don. I'm a musician from up here in Canada. And between that and being a horror movie connoisseur, that's pretty much my, uh, my ins and outs. That's what I do. <laughs> cool. That's excellent. Thank you for jo joining us. It's great to meet you, Don. It's definitely a pleasure, sir. Cool. What's your Jonathan. Place, Dasha? <laughs> Jonathan. <laughs> we had to go to Hellraiser quote in here somewhere. Um, Jonathan. Um, Jonathan. Hi. I, you know, uh, just, just can't stop saying my name. Uh, my name is uh, Jonathan Hughes. I'm a, uh, was a cinema, cinema projectionist for eight years. Uh, now I work as a warehouse employee. I spend way too much time on Xbox playing Destiny or... Um, Halo Master Chief Collection, and also watching movies. And I've also written my first short, which I'm hoping to get uh, <laughs> sorted by the, the year as well. So. Okay, cool. Congratulations. Well, I look forward to hearing more about that. And thank you very much again for your contribution to 
the Saska Cenobite Valentine. That yeah. was a that was, that was a epic. That was a epic. That was, that was great fun. Um, and lastly, uh, we're joined by Steve. Hi, Steve. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm uh, Steve Zarebski. I work at Goodwill here in uh, Chatham, Ontario, and I watch horror movies and play video games in my spare time, pretty much. Cool. All right, then, Steve. Well, thank you very much indeed. So, um, so what we're talking about today are the two versions of The Fly. Can I just ask something of all of you before I come to you individually, and I, I, I want to get feedback from all of you. Has anyone... Had anyone actually read the short story of The Fly? I have not, no. No, okay. No, um, not yet. I not me, no. Uh, no, I, uh, it was originally published in Playboy magazine. Um, How did I uh, miss it? <laughs> <laughs> you probably weren't, to be honest, you weren't born, um, I suspect, because it, I, I think it was 57 it was actually published, because oh, the film came out in 58. And they reckon that they went into production on uh, The Fly, the 1958 version with Vincent Price, pretty soon after the short story came out. Um, it was picked up by really? 20th Century Fox. I came across it in a, uh, a collection of short stories sometime in the 1960s. I probably would have been about 10, 12, something like that. It's a short, short story. It's really, in it's very interesting. What it's particularly notable about it is the fact that the film, the first film, really follows the short story in many details, including quoting lines. Quite a few of the lines and the speeches. Um, in the first movie, you get this lovely scene between Vincent Price and the son, Henri, um, mm -hmm. where he talks about the fact that Henri, the child, is wanting, you know, talks about the fact that his mother is interested in the white-headed fly and then quips, and then, you know, she said, told me to let it go, and then she wanted it again later on. You know what women are like, and that is a direct pin, that's a direct lift from the original short story, uh, that piece of dialogue. Um, a lot of the letters that, that are passed under the door from the, um, from the laboratory, laboratory um, mm -hmm. Uh, more or less verbatim translations from the from the from the original short story as well, which oh, okay. I thought was really interesting. Um, so I know not everyone's had a chance to have a look at it, but those of you who have had a look at the uh, original, what do we? What do you? What do you like particularly about the first one, Don? I'll start with you first, if I may. What do you particularly like about the first? Uh, as in, oh, the, the first the first film. Um, mm. To be honest, for the time that it was done, it was the the effects were fantastic. Like, it, and you'd be thinking back to the fifties, you'd be thinking something like, you know, you've got your Creature of the Black Lagoons, you've got like the original monster movies like that, and still the special effects were fantastic. The idea to even and how they 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 built the two like they built the two stations, like even to think of that back in the fifties, like that's like some like some Star Trek sort of stuff that you wouldn't expect them to to have come up with, and they did it extremely well. I, I particularly like the effects of when they're again the whole thing about putting the glasses on is directly from the story. Yeah. What I particularly liked though, and I don't think it's in the original story, is that when um, uh, Elena, the uh, Elaine, the wife, uh, invites the Vincent Price character to go downstairs to see the most <coughs> recent invention. The first thing he says, oh, what is it? Is it flat screen? <laughs> and, 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 yeah. I just, <laughs> and I just thought that was so extraordinary. It's just like, oh, wow, they were thinking about flat screens in the 1950s, because, of course, they were, they were talking about um, wow. mm -hmm. um, you know, something that was uh, really quite modern, you know, the CRT, um, cathode ray tubes in those days. Um, it's like that. Steve, you've seen the first movie. What do you think of the first movie? I like the uh, thing with the how they did the matter transport effects. I'm still trying to figure out how they did that, and I love Vincent Price's uh, great performance. It, it it is a great performance. I think one of the things I particularly like, and if you 
I put a link to the um, short story um, on the uh, on this event, and I'll make sure it's it, it's still there when we finished. The first page and a half of the short story is all about how the narrator, which is the Vincent Price character, hates telephones. Um, and he mm -hmm. talks about what an intrusion they are, and he talks about. So this is all a build up to when he receives a phone call at two o'clock in the morning from his sister-in-law to say that she's just killed his brother. Um, it's a really inter you know, interesting way of introducing it, and I, I do agree with you. I think the Vincent Price character is, inter is very interesting, beautifully played by Vincent Price, very sympathetic, and he's obviously so in love with his sister-in-law as well. Um, which I think is quite interesting. Um, Derek, you, you're having a few connection issues. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was just... Say that again. I, uh, I'm hoping I solved that. Uh, I uh, decided to connect to my Wi-Fi rather than using my data. Okay. Okay, we can we can still hear you. Uh, what do you think of... of you, you've seen the first film, I think. Yes. Yeah, what do, what do you particularly like about the first film? Uh, well, if, for me, it definitely seemed like uh, with, with most 1950s horror, there was this kind of uh, aversion to technology, uh, this whole uh, concept that the more technologically advanced we got, the more dangers there were hidden within them. Uh, and that certainly seemed to play very well with the way the character, uh, 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 Andre, uh, as he had turned to the fly and was trying to push his, his family away from him because of this, those dangers. That's an interesting observation. Um, mm -hmm. The Yes, because I think one of the things that is made noticeable in the um, DVD, uh, in the Blu-ray extras uh, on the first movie is the fact that, of course, the, not that long after the Second World War and the introduction of the atom bomb, in fact, the poster for the um, first movie emphasizes the fact that this is all the result of an atomic mutation. Um, the first time that the, you know, the effects of an atomic mutation have been shown on a human being is one of the um, uh, is, is one of the things that they really pushed at that time. I also love the tagline for the first movie, which was. See if I can get it right. He was once human, even and even as you and I, um, which I thought was beautifully poetic for a tagline for the time. Uh, we've just been joined um, by Eric. I think I can't see him. Are you there, Eric? No, he's he's sounding. He may just be. Yeah, really cool logo. He's got a great. Yeah. He's, yeah. <laughs> We're wearing a cool tattoo, I would admit. Yeah, it would make a very, very that cool tattoo. Cool it kind of reminds me of the, of the Mentors logo with their with their, their little hats that they wear. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, so... Do, do, does anybody have any other thoughts? I've asked you what you liked about the first movie. And anybody have, have any other thoughts about the first movie? The one thing that really, really caught me about the fir about the first film, and I think probably everybody has the, the the who's seen it has the same. It's it's that it's that voice when the 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 the, the, actual, the white headed fly after he's he's done his metamorphose is about to be eaten by the spider. That that help me! You cannot get that out of your head. That was brilliant. It, it, it was absolutely superb. I think it's it's ab it is absolutely superb. Um, we have just been uh, joined by Eric. we've been joined by Eric twice. Bear with me for two seconds, or yeah, whilst I get rid of the um, of the second joining of Eric. Um, yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right, um, Eric. I will come with you. Just Eric, we can see the lower half of your face rather than the top half. That's a lot better. Um, but that I think every single one of us who thinks of the first one, help me, help me, um, and Craig, my husband, really, really hates that. If I do that voice, it really freaks him out. Uh, <laughs> well, they did such a good job on it. Convincing. 
And mm -hmm. it, again, the effects, I think we were talking earlier on about the effect. I mean, the great thing about the fly in the first one is I think it's David Henderson's, Edison's, the way he manages to make the arm of the fly as if it is something else that is trying to take over him. There's a lot yeah. to do with that performance. A lot of the time you actually don't see the the creature, or you see, you know that there's something wrong because he's covered his face. And he keeps he keeps like shoving his hand in his pocket so he doesn't come out with a little claw thing. Yes, yeah, and then plays that really nice where the claw mm. thing is trying to grab, and he has to grab it to try and shove it back, and you know because it seems to be stopping him trying to write on the wall to write messages and somehow mm -hmm. subsuming the humanity of it. Um, no, that was that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. But also, I think the great thing is it's very it's because it's done. It's shot in that dark lab. You only see the head in shadow and darkness. Um, mm. That's partly what makes it effective. But you do get the, the idea that there's some sort of mandible coming out of the you know that's breathing. You can feel that. And that really mm -hmm. cool shot of his wife is seen through the eyes of a fly. With yes, the multi, with the multi lens yes. um, effect, when she screams, so you get the effect of her screaming, and then you n cut to the shot of the fly's view of all these different of the of the repeated images of her screaming, which just uh, emphasizes the effect. Mm -hmm. Now, our friend Herrick, I think, is having problems, and I'm just going to see if I can mute him for a for a moment whilst he moves around and sorts out his uh, his him, himself. Um, hopefully, he'll come back in a few moments. Um, so we talked. I think, as I say, I love the relationship between Vincent Price and the boy. I think the boy does. <laughs> he's a kid actor. Um, mm -hmm. He does a good job there. But I think it, going back to the effects, the effect at the very end of uh, Francois, or is it Don? We we sorted out the name of the. I, I need to move my. Oh, screen um, around. yeah. Uh, the 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 name. Uh, what was it? I can't remember the. Andre. Name now. Andre. Yes. That was the doctor. Yes. Andre. Yes. The effect of Andre in the web, and mm -hmm. the spider. As you that say, actually, if, if I was going to say, if if you have you seen, uh, I'm pretty sure it's one of the Nightmare on Elm Streets that even even used like a shot of that can like that's playing on one of the TV screens when uh, I I think I'm pretty sure it's when Joey gets sucked into the bed in Nightmare on Elm Street Four. They even had that kind of playing with the whole like spider going in and help me as it was like being sucked into the bed. There's did, been a I lot. Think... There's been a lot of that. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I've no. never noticed that. Similar to when they're playing shots of Evil Dead in the first Nightmare on Elm Street movie as well. Is that mm -hmm. what yep. to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, awesome. yeah. I'm just going to introduce Eric. To, I'm just going to take a pause for a moment because uh, mm -hmm. Eric Gross has joined us. I'm also <coughs> just going to... Eric, do come and introduce yourself. I'm also going to try and introduce somebody else to the film strip uh, who's just messaged me. So please introduce yourself, Eric. He's muted. Yeah, I see him muted. Yeah, okay. Eric, do you want to try unmuting yourself? Um, How's that? Good. You? Sorry about the... Oh, Christ. <laughs> yes? <laughs> <laughs> yes, my son. <laughs> He's disappeared again. Cool. All right. Well, we try and and Tori Mystic of the Mist. I'm sorry. I have just tried to invite you, but I'm not quite. You're you're not coming up on my list of people I can invite. Um, but I'm trying to get you onto the show. Okay. Um, Eric. I'm hoping we'll come back in a few moments, and this time not muted. Um. Cool. Any other thoughts on the original version of the fly? The one thing that really creeped me out was the slurping sounds that, that Andre made as he was feeding every time his wife brought him meals. Yeah. The, the rum-laced milk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> A bowl of milk yeah. laced with rum. <laughs> Where's the rum going? <laughs> 
and, and I found that he's obviously thought this through because he's thinking, I need a drink. I need a really good, strong drink at this point in my life. Do you blame him? But, <laughs> but there's no way a fly... Fly, you might as well um, get a few beers in while he's at it, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. But there's no way a fly is going to want to drink rum, but would probably take milk. Huh? So he's definitely thought this through. I like, and again, it comes from a short story. <laughs> it's part of the original short you story. You see a fly. You see a big pint glass, and you see a fly sipping into it. Then you know it's human. Then you know it's a human being that's been yeah. turned into. <laughs> so that's how you know. You just got to get into a little glass, like. All right, let's save this man. What are we gonna do? Come on, let's figure this out, guys. It's the 21st century, so I'm sure we can turn the human into a glass now. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. Flies around, but you, you can tell I don't drink alcohol, don't you? But um, yeah, yeah, cool. All right. So I think I mean, as a, apart from the, I think the, the other, issues. Yeah, no, I think. Steve, did you have any yeah, other thoughts on the first messages. movie? No, yeah, maybe. But oh, here it is. Yeah, so. Um, uh, did you? Do you think uh, it'll get uh, remade again? Oh, may oh, maybe. The way Hollywood's going, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, it, I think it'll get remade. Screw the original yeah. did have two sequels, I believe. It I had did. Return of the Fly. I didn't yeah. know there was a second one. Return of the that. Fly. Um, yeah, they then had sequels too. The, there, uh, yes, there, there are. You're absolutely <coughs> right, Derek. There are two sequels: Return of the Fly and then Curse of the Fly. Oh, I didn't know about Curse. Um, and I have to, I have to say, I have not seen it. Um, I'm, this is purely <coughs> me watching my, uh, doing my some of my research and actually having watched the DVD extras of, of the Blu-ray extras on the first one. One, I managed to see all those. Um, the idea is that you get the transportation machine. And it is. So in the second movie, it's the son who gets put yes. in. Yes. And of course, the, the I think the other classic thing when I was researching for this, and this is, I think, my experience as well, when you think of the first movie, do you think of it as a color film or black and white? I originally wow. thought it was black. When I first saw it, I thought it was black. I thought, like, I was expecting it to be black and white. When I saw it in color, I was like, wow. Okay, I was not because like the only thing I'd seen up until that point was like the spider scene, and that's all technically in black and white, except for like what like when until you see the black the brown spider coming in, but mm -hmm. it's all in black, and so that's what I originally expected. I think this is, uh, uh, this seems to be a fairly common occurrence. I think it's even mentioned on Wikipedia, the fact that most people that, because I think when it first started being shown on TVs, you only had black and white televisions. Mm -hmm. So it was shown in the 1960s mostly yeah. on black and white television. And of course the weird thing is that they made the second movie in black and white and they didn't make the second movie in colour. Mm -hmm. So Return of the Fly is a black and white movie. So I think that's what possibly uh, confuses people as well. So, um, so is the dress uh, black and blue or red, uh, white and gold then? Oh, not the dress. <laughs> 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 Helen Keller said it best. The dress is black. Everything is black. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we have just been joined by Eric. Hi, Eric. Yellow. Yo. Hey, yeah. There he is. Yeah. In one of your many different, I've got. I think you've just come in on your Yay. third possible. Uh, uh, do introduce dive. yourself, Eric. Uh sure. Uh, I, I keep losing the signal. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Oh. One second. Oh, that, was oh. neat. that one's cool. It's great, isn't it? Okay, no, no, okay, no I want that as a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't even uh, know where you are. There, let's try this one. We can hear He's like you. Mystique. He's like a shapeshifter. There you are. We can hear there. you. All right, try. just bear with me. Okay. There we go. Okay. Cool. We can see you and we can hear you. <laughs> I can finally see everybody. I was having all sorts of fun there. You were. 
Um, would you just like to introduce yeah. yourself, Eric? Uh, my name's Eric. Uh, uh, I've been uh, kind of doing a lot of uh, projects with Barbie, and uh, I've got one pending with Nico in the background as soon mm -hmm. as we get permission for stuff. Okay. Um, and uh, I've just been in the background for a long time helping with people on projects. Uh, I worked Ooh. with Tim on a project. Uh, yeah, that's about enough. I mean, uh, some yeah. of you know me, if you don't. Cool, Eric. We we would we just actually kind of um, winding up the, um, about the first movie. Have you seen the first movie recently? Oh, Vincent Price. Yeah, you were. Um, I lost contact when you were talking about the web sequence in Friday. Uh, not Friday. The, um, Nightmare. Uh, thank you, Nightmare, uh, with with the bed sequence. And that's when everything went fuzzy on my end. Okay. Do you, do you, uh, what's your favorite part of the first movie? Do you like the first movie? Yeah, actually, it had some redeeming. Like uh, somebody mentioned the eyes that when they pulled the hood off and you saw the multifaceted eyes. Uh, I mean, because mm -hmm. if you think about the time the film was done, that was like cutting edge. Mm. So mm. by those by those days, there and uh, what you said about everything being the nuclear area just about happening, and this was uh, just after World War II, I think, when the film was made. Uh, yeah, it's ten think, years after. Yeah, ten years after. So everybody went from that and going straight into the Cold War, I think. Yeah. So it was I mean, uh, a fair one thing to the other. So, um, and they were just hammering out those kind of horror movies left and right. But the fly was always the best. Actually, my favorite part would have to be um, the spider when it was getting him at the end, and you see the little voice at the end going, "Help me." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think, and this is what Derek was saying was the fact that a lot of the um, uh, the films of that time are about not trusting science, and the whole you know, in fact. There is the speech in the first movie about it being. There is basically there are things that men are not supposed to know. Um, seems to be the whole uh, message of that movie. Okay, cool. Well, let's move on to the second movie. So this is made by uh, 28 years later um, by David Cronenberg. David Cronenberg was invited in to direct uh, a screenplay that had already been written, um, and. What it, okay, I suppose the, the the first question is who prefers the first one, who prefers the second one? Second, second for sure. Second, yeah. Uh, second, even though I like them both equally. <laughs> cool. All right. In terms what, of okay. acting, I think the first is 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 my favorite. I mean, it's 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 got. Iconic uh, uh, roles being played by iconic actors. Uh, the second one, simply for the gore and the effects. So it's kind of a, it's like a scale, you know. It's they're almost balanced in in their own regards. Okay. It's almost like apples and oranges. Yeah, yeah you can't compare the two. Okay. When I was going to college, the fly came out, and we were actually doing a study on film course, and the teacher actually took the new version of the fly to, to talk about and there was uh, they had done so much research and there was there were so many scenes that they filmed that they didn't put in the scene uh, in the movie rather like uh, at the very end before he uh, he um, he goes to capture the girl uh, in the hospital uh, Gina Davis mm -hmm. in the hospital there's uh, oh, this whole jury there's the whole dream sequence where uh, they show a, a baby with butterfly wings that he dreams mm -hmm. about that they decided yeah. not to put into the film. And, okay. Uh, that was part of the extras you didn't see, Nick. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you missed Eric. I, I, I admitted I didn't manage to get to see all the other ex the extras that I wanted to see um, because I ran out of time. Basically, I will go away and have a look at them now. Um, I find <laughs> I, I find it. <laughs> so we can tell which bits of the extras I've seen. You can fill in for me, Don. I know you, Don. I know you're a big fan. Of the remake, of the, what, what, what are your thoughts on the uh, on the Cronenberg version? Uh, the Cronenberg version for me, it goes way back to when I was a kid. That was technically the first. It was the first quote unquote horror film I had ever seen uh, when I was like nine years old. My mom taped it off of like up here in Canada. We have we had like late night on city TV, and my mom had recorded it uh, on one of the the. Like on VHS way back in the day, and I used to, I remember I, I, I stayed up I stayed up late one one night after they went to bed, and I popped it in and I watched it, and I was literally enthralled by it, and it had me captured at that point, and it's 
it that was kind of like a staple. Like I I ran that tape out. I watched it so many times. I go out to play with my friends, and they, like as soon as we'd be leaving the driveway on our bikes, I'd be like, all right, when can I get home and watch the fly? When can I get home and watch the fly? Because I just I was just I I loved it. I was I was mesmerized by it because I'd never seen anything like that. And that was pretty much my start. Was he how, talking how, about the, yeah. I'm sorry. Was Don talking about the new or the old one? The old one. Or no, the new one. The new one. The, the, the new one. The new one. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, Don, sorry, I missed... How old would you have been? Nine. Nine years old. Wow. So I've been eight, uh, 89. Wow. I was 84, and I started about, like, 10 or 11 taping uh, Pet Cemetery and Poltergeist off uh, TV. Classics. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't admit the fact that I haven't actually watched Pet Cemetery because Dee will t tell me off. Um, I've met most of the cast, but I still haven't got round to watching Pet Cemetery. I really must watch Pet Cemetery. Um, that's another one. So, <laughs> Sometimes that is better. <laughs> John, why? Okay, you're nine years old. I'm sorry, at nine years old, you know, I come from a completely different generation than yourself. Obviously, mm -hmm. I was literally born in the I was literally born the year the fly was made. Um, mm -hmm. So what? For as a nine year old, why did you? What? And we're talking about the Cronenberg one here. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Why do you think you were so, so fascinated with it? Because like up up until then, like a lot of the movies that I used to watch uh, when I was a kid, like you know you have you've got your you know a lot of the ones that I watched when I was that age. You had your Star Wars films and everything else, and and like I had you know Star Wars was the big one for me. The um, like you know like Harry and the Hendersons, like a lot of those original '80s movies were like big films for me when I was a kid. And when I saw The Fly, it was. It was unlike, any, like, especially the effects and the storyline alone, it was unlike anything I'd ever seen. Plus two, for some strange reason, I had a nine-year-old crush on Gina Davis. I still don't understand where that came from. But <laughs> at the same time, I, I think that might have been technically almost like a, a, a tie into why I enjoyed it as much as I did. But it was just, it was something completely different. I'd never seen anything like that. The, like, even Star Wars, like, the, the technology that they used in Star Wars versus, you know, what you see, like, yeah, you, you'd seen, like, you know, the pod, that, that type of stuff in the Star Wars films, but, like, again, when you get into the gore effects of it, especially when he sends the chimp through the first time, and you got that, like, the sounds that they even use to make that thing, like, squirm on the plate, like, that, it, I, I'd never seen it before. It was like, wow, dude, that's awesome! And my mom thought it was morbid. It was hilarious, and I've had to like that ever since. <laughs> oh, is it... I, I, I'm fascinated by that. I, I, I really am interested in that because I think kids are interested in death. They are interested in gross out things, mm -hmm. uh, particularly. And I, I guess if that's, you know, if you're introduced to it in a safe environment. And so, you know, I've met nine year olds who've watched Hellraiser. They're big fans of Chatterer. Um, yeah. I'm not you know, denigrating everyone's parents. Derek, what do you. I'll come to you, Derek. What. What do you think about the? You said you preferred the performances in the first one. No, I quite like the performances. I, I like Gene. I'm a big fan of Gina Davis as well, and watching it again this afternoon and Jeff Goldblum particularly. Mm. Though I have to say, sorry, Derek. Uh, there's one thought whilst, whilst Jeff Goldblum is channeling David Cronenberg, in particularly in that first. What I watched it again this afternoon. This morning, rather, the he's Cronenberg from Nightbreed, as far as I'm concerned. Um, that big, starey eye, waiting for her to talk and speaking very softly and very slowly. It's just Cronenberg <laughs> in playing Decker. Um, I never even thought of that. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> It's, I was trying to find photographs because he, he's got the big glasses on, but without the big, you know, and when he takes them off, he tends to do scope, but he does this very quiet, and that is exactly what Gold, go back have a look at that first, the first sequence when they, when he's basically picking her up at the um, science fair. Um, he's channeling Cronenberg, he completely channeling Cronenberg as far as I'm concerned. No, no, Derek. Sorry, I was asking something to change the world. <laughs> <laughs> and like as we know it. 
I know it like the back of my hand, I'm telling you. <laughs> you do. You very much do. We we definitely bow to you in that in that extent. <laughs> but that's only because you're a warped child. I am. I, <laughs> and I turned out fine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Fine. <laughs> Sorry, Derek. I I am trying to. I turned out good. <laughs> no, when you mention that, you're right. Born in '84, by the way. Cronenberg esque uh, performance. Uh, uh, and no disrespect to Gina Davis, she did a great job in her role as well. Uh, but they were following performances of other, even though the roles are different. Uh, instead of being uh, like a husband, it's, it's a man and his 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 lover. There, there's a whole different dynamic to the characters. But for me, the the, the remake was definitely about the. the I loved the uh, the ability to see the transformation uh, of uh, Goldblum's character from human to fly, to what he called the brindle fly. You didn't see that transformation in the original. It was you didn't get to see it happen. Yeah. And I liked the slow conversion. Period. But they tried to change the story a little bit, update it. Uh, in the original version, it's like a fly got in and he, uh, they exchanged parts. But in the new version, what they said is it spliced them on a genetic level. And what you're watching was he was slowly becoming, what does he said, the politics of bugs in the movie? Insect I mean, politics. Right. Insects don't have politics. <laughs> <You're starting> to <laughs> They're very brutal. <laughs> you started to understand how they think, which became, you could see him transforming into, he was losing his humanity. <clears throat> he, was, he was starting to become something else, and uh, at first he was totally resistant to it, and then he began to embrace it, and then he just became insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what's, the, what's, the, what's the original, the, the guy who played, uh, who played um, and, uh, Andre, he had the exact same thing, and... and it was a di it was differently written, but it, it was still kind of the same because he showed the exact same thing as when he first had it happen. He was able to type everything fine and send her the notes under the door. And afterwards, when he, he was like sitting there trying to write "love you" on the board, like he had his other hand grasping him and trying to stop him from doing it, yet he was still trying to express himself. And that I think that's what Cronen the the twist Cronenberg put on the new one was instead of showing that, we'll actually show. The, the visual degradation of from human to fly and how it actually destroyed, you know, Brundle and became this Brundle fly. Yeah, the, the, that's, that's always been the, the phrase that I remember. Although, obviously, and I, I wrote it in the, um, in, when the post for this, for this show, the, the two classic lines from the two classic movies are, help me, and no, be afraid, be very afraid. I remember sitting in the cinema and watching that and just going, whoa, whoa, you know, where are mm -hmm. we going with this? Um, and, yeah, it, 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 it's absolutely extraordinary the, what they managed to achieve in the, 19, uh, uh, in the 1980s uh, mm -hmm. version of it. Um, Jonathan, I know you've, you've watched... Oops, uh, you kind of disappeared. Oh, when I clicked on you, you disappeared. You were there. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, it's Jonathan almost like everyone seems to be... Frozen. He he does. It's like a Steve, you're you're still here, aren't you? I think Jonathan was saying that his battery yeah. was running out. So, sorry, Steve, you were. Yeah, maybe. What are your thoughts on the on the new version? Which do you you prefer the new version? Uh, uh, I think I like them both. For the new version, though, I think the effects are up there with John Carpenter's The Thing for '80s movies. Another right. remake. Yes, absolutely another remake. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I, I've i seen the remake recently. I don't think I've ever seen the original. There's another one on my list of things that I really should have watched but never have done. I don't think the remake was actually a remake. I think it was actually a prequel. No, no, no. The, the, the John Carpenter film was a remake of the original thing. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. You're right. You're right. Yes. See, what, uh, see they, they had it right in the 80s. In the 80s, they could remake films right. What has happened now? I don't get it. So, it's well, the millennium. <laughs> I think he's got a point with that one. I mean, in the 80s, when they remade something, they actually took the time to learn what they were doing. And now they're just, it seems as they're cranking it out with that, with a heavy emphasis on visual. And they're not getting the soul of the story involved. Like, uh, 
what you're talking about now. It's like I love the first version of the Fly. It's a it's a classic. It's a favorite, and it's it's always going to stand there. Vincent Price really was at his acting height at that point. He could give visual clues. I mean, he was uh, uh, he could walk into a room without saying anything and just have a presence go on on the film. Jeff Goldblum, I mean, he understood the role of who he was taking on, and he they didn't get overly graphic in what he's doing. He gave a performance, mm -hmm. and Jeff can really pull off. He's a very, very uh, method actor. Mm -hmm. He really got into it, and he worked well with Gina Davis, who he later married in this. Uh, the 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 movies like you were just talking about the recent version of the thing is absolute. I'm sorry, it's crap. I mean, it's visually it's great. But the Carpenter version of remake was—I I mean, that that had me on the edge of the seat. I hated that. I hated the prequel. No, the, the prequel was the bad. Was like a very lengthy uh, Twilight Zone episode. Mm -hmm. yeah, Carpenter, much. they understood it. They remade it. They didn't get too crazy. Uh, it's like Aliens. It's like don't show the monster every five seconds. Keep it till those few seconds that it's in there. Mm -hmm. Build up. Uh, it's like the classic with Scarface. It's like let the audience, let let their imaginations create for them. Don't dictate what's going on. And well, see, that, that's one of the that's. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say that that that's the problem with a lot with a lot of these remakes. Like it, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a prime example of that. You have Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original. When when you watch it, it's really not all that. There's like not very much gore at all because Toby Hooper, like you'd see you'd see the door close. And then you'd hear the blood curdling scream, and he left it up to your imaginations to say, "This is what's happening." Whereas in the remake, you see it all. It's just like, "Huh, okay, I got it." Like that—that's what they're missing. They're missing that whole, you know, imagine it yourself aesthetic with like the quick stops, stop cutting from one scene to the other, and leaving it to your mind to be like, "Oh, okay, uh, what's what's that? What's going on with that? What the hell's going on there?" That's that's what causes that fear and that dread. Whereas when you just show a whole bunch of blood and guts on the screen, it's like, all right, it's cool the way they did that. But the whole feeling of what they were originally going for is gone. The terror is gone. The horror is gone. I think it comes down to. Uh, I'm sorry. I think it comes down to like you have. I think you, you're not understanding the term. It's like a remake is when you actually embrace the original and try and recreate it without mm -hmm. varying from the course. But nowadays they're rehashing. It's they're they're throwing a name on it. And saying it's uh, it's it's a remake of the same thing. Like uh, I saw the uh, the new version of uh, oh what the Evil Dead. That was uh, yeah yeah. Ex you know what? It's like just because you call it something doesn't mean it's actually qualified as a remake. It's just yeah. a rehash. They don't have the soul in it. A remake is something where they try to re envision what was originally intended, mm -hmm. and a remake. It's just, we're just going to crank it out for the money and throw the same title back on it, and we'll get the original people to look at it. So it's more the, of a marketing than anything else. The, it's interesting, because I, 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 when you... The opening credits for Cronenberg's The Fly just references the original story, and mm -hmm. it says, from a story um, by George Langerheim. I mean, you think, yes, it is from a story by George Langerland. That is, it, it acknowledges the idea, you know, the whole idea of somebody metamorphosing. <clears throat> it is talk. Is, I mean, with, these are the films that, where the, the term body horror really came into being in the 1980s as far as, you know, The Fly was one of the classics of body horror. Obviously, it's Cronenberg. That's he, this is really what Cronenberg is interested in. A lot of what it, he's interested in. Um, the the other thing that kind of s struck me about that, and moving on from you know the the debate about, and I think it's a very interesting debate that we've just had. You guys have just been talking about, and which is why I wanted to have a look at Fright Night, which I think is a lot of what you're referring to, um, where they have more or less remade. I think the term reboot is kind of interesting, which is what they've done with uh, Star Trek. Um, yes. Taking the original idea and putting it into a slightly different universe. Looking at the same subject, keeping enough of the familiar themes, but looking at it in a very different way. And I think that's very interesting, because uh, I really enjoyed the first, uh, the J.J. Abrahams uh, Star Trek movies. 
But coming back to the fly again, one thing I really noticed the difference between the two is A, the difference in the style of acting, but also particularly the difference in the music and the way the music is used throughout. In the 1950s, it was perfectly acceptable to put music underneath the dialogue <coughs> just to tell you you are now watching a romantic scene mm -hmm. and therefore you will have violins playing and strings playing in the background. Whereas the score for the uh, for Cronenberg's the thing is a completely different uh, thick beast. There's an awful lot more brass in it apart from anything else. Oh, it's Howard it... Shore. That's... Yeah. Yeah. Is a com it is, yeah, and, and that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're, you're absolutely right, Don. I think the, the, find, the thing that I find interesting and the fact that it's nearly 30 years after it's you know, the original was made, is things date. Now, we can admire the, the, the fly and the original version of the fly and enjoy it, and I think it's a wonderful film, and I, I really did enjoy watching it again, and I still find it very moving, as I did the original short story, um, which I mentioned earlier on. Um, Cronenberg makes it entirely his own, uh, this story. And it's still dealing with the, the similar things about what you can, what scientists are doing, and just how far is too far as far as science is concerned. Um, but what I also Thank think about, God. yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Again, I think it's one of the the in the original trailer for the uh, for the Vincent Price version where he, you know, a classic 1950s trailer where he just walks towards the hello, my name is Vincent Price. Um, mm -hmm. We can't show you any more about the man who played God. Um, it's a really fascinating trailer on, for the first one as well. They hardly show any clips. They have Vincent Price talking to the audience. You see a lot of vague images, but a lot of it is more or less a black blank it's screen. Like a Hitchcock you're... trailer. Yeah, absolutely. But a lot of it is a blank <coughs> screen where you're just listening to clips from the movie. Mm -hmm. Which I think was quite, you know, quite innovative at the time. You would not see, you know, use. I can't imagine that will happen these days in a, in a trailer for a movie. Uh, you get very, you know, you tend to get to see people want to know what it is they're getting for their money. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, sorry, Eric. Carry on. Uh, sorry. I was going to point out, like during that time when they filmed The Fly, they were being innovative where they were actually adding things to the theater. So like. Uh, you'd go to the theater and it was actually almost be like a Rocky Horror picture where like when something happens suddenly people would squirt you in to, to go in times with the theater or they'd have smells pipe in and it would just add a whole new uh, ambiance and that it just kept pushing the genre at the time for them to produce more uh, out of the box movies uh, they, they, they tapped into something at the time and I think the fly I don't remember what they had but in some of the theaters they were they were uh, there were there was something I, like I think that. you're actually thinking of slightly later on. Um, uh, William Castle, I believe, is the director who's well who's known for this. Uh, and you're thinking of things like The Tingler and The House, uh, oh, right, right, right. House on Haunted Hill, Hill, where they had Imergo Vision, which is basically a skeleton actually coming out of the screen itself towards the audience, mm -hmm. and The Tingler, where they put um, they wired the chairs of the audience. Um, so that they could electrocute yeah. them to make them feel <laughs> that the tingle was actually touching them. It actually came slightly later on um, when you get into only a few years um, when you get things like 3D House of Wax, you start getting into all those kind of <laughs> things. But I think the, the real thing about The Fly is it, it, they didn't have that kind of thing. Yeah. It was just a straight movie and they played it for what it's worth. I think the, the strength of both of these is that you get the emotional reason why people are doing things. In the first movie, he's driven because he wants, you know, he, it's the end of world poverty. It's You can move surpluses. There's a really great noble cause here. Goldblum, you think, not quite sure. He's kind of just interested. He's the, he's the scientist who wants to... Just finding, you know, insatiable curiosity. 
but the reason why he goes through the, um, the the pods is because he's jealous. He thinks that the girl's going off with her previous boyfriend, and he's angry. And you know, and he's doing it because he's had too much to drink that night. I really like that mm -hmm. sequence. Um, yeah, yeah, they're baboons rather than chimpanzees, by the way. Um, <laughs> oh, it was a baboon! It was a baboon! <laughs> Oh, it was a baboon. For some reason, I thought it was a chimp. Yeah, no, they're, they're beautiful baboons. The most beautiful, oh, yeah. beautiful baboons. They're really friendly. He obviously spent some time with the baboons. Oh, um, for sure. Because um, they were trained to learn each other. Okay, guys, we've probably got about five more minutes, five, ten more minutes for this uh, for this hangout, because I'm determined to finish on time for once. Um, <laughs> any <five> <laughs> 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 I was going to say, most of them are about an hour and a half. I was, you know, going on two hours. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is, I'll never do it with the Suskas and Barbie and Simon. I, you know, I completely oh. admit that, that if I ever have a big guest, I'd probably be the same with Tim Bryan in about three weeks' time. But, so, <laughs> <laughs> with you guys, I feel I can be more strict. Um, anyway, <laughs> final. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. how much everyone who watches this kind of show will enjoy it. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> for sure. I get, for sure. For sure. Um, okay, Steve, I've not heard from you for a little while. What are your, have you got any final thoughts on, um, on either of these movies? Is there anything else you'd like to share with us about? I think uh, the remake, the effects are up there with like The Thing and Reanimator. Like 80s movies, it's still uh -huh. one of the top three. Uh, that's that's very true. Yeah, because yeah, you're absolutely right. There's very much, and I, I guess it comes back. Do, are you? What do you prefer? Are you a, an old school person, Steve, in terms of really appreciating the fact that these are practical effects rather than the CGI? I like it. I like it so much better when people build practical effects than CGI. Right. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, Derek, what are what are what are your final thoughts? Uh, well, definitely, uh, practical effects is always a way to go for me. CGI should be used minimally and only to to maybe touch up or or something. Uh, and as far as uh, the the remake, uh, I do think that Jeff Goldblum's performance in in The Fly is probably one of the only few times I've seen him not do a Jeff Goldblum in his performance. He always has a certain cadence, and in The Fly, it's not there. Right. Yeah. Cool. That's true. Yeah. That's very true. That's very true. Eric. That's true. Eric, what are your final thoughts? Derek oh. or Eric? Eric. You. <laughs> <laughs> With the glasses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Derek, sorry. Derek. You just spoke uh, to Derek. I'm now saying Eric. Okay. Actually, I like the this particular film. Uh, I it's hard to choose which one I like better. They both have their strong points. I think they're both well made. The original is well made. The remake in this case is really well made. Had you chosen something else, it might have been a completely different uh, argument. But I think if you're going to make a remake, if they actually understand what came before and take it upon themselves to actually remake the film and know what was done, I think it could do well. But if they're just going to slap it together and hire a director and say, interpret, and he doesn't know the material, I think it's going to fall short every time. You're always going to have somebody say, just throw a visual effect in that and it'll be fine. But if you're going to remake something, be true to it. Okay, cool. All right, then. Thank you very much indeed. And Don, last word from you. Last words from me. Um, when it comes to The Fly, the original and the remake, uh, one of the things I really like to go back to with it is is the fact you can you can take it in almost like a music sense. Like you've got bands that do cover songs of other bands, and you have some amazing cover songs, and you have some not so amazing cover songs, and it's all about taking that original song, or in this case, the original film, and the director and screenwriter and whatnot ma taking that idea and making it their own, putting their own twist on it and making it that much different. It's it's like perfect example like when when the band Dope took uh, "You Spin Me Right Round" and remade it into a heavier song. 
still the same song, but completely rewrote it and completely remade it. And that's what makes a good remake. That's what makes a good, you know, a good reboot to a series is when you take the idea and you make it your own. You don't just quote Nightmare on Elm Street it where you take the original film and you make shot for shot the original film, but with new technology. Right. It's a tough right. argument. Hmm? Yeah. It comes down to a tough yeah. argument, no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you so very much indeed. I really enjoyed this evening. I hope you have as well. It's been very interesting listening to your views. I think, uh, as far as this one is concerned, we like both. I think the general consensus is that we like both these movies. Um, they're very different beasts. Um, we actually really enjoy the both and respect what they've done. Um, it'd be interesting if, if any of you are able to join me in a couple of weeks' time when we look at Fright Night, because I think those are two very... That is possibly where we're talking yes. about taking the original and just remaking it. Um, yes. But it'll be interesting to see if we can find anything in the second, in the most recent version that we actually like about it uh, and something that we do yeah. well, you know, that has been done well. <laughs> <laughs> so there's my challenge. Can we find something that's been done well in the remake of it? Um, I think it should be, a, hopefully there should be another interesting conversation. Um, I you might have to... just as much fun time finding Jimmy Hoffa's body as finding something good in the remake. <laughs> I thought they found Jimmy Hoffa's body. I thought they found a garage. He was actually in somebody's. It was. I thought they found Jimmy Hoffa's body. Um, I just want to thank Jonathan Hughes, Eric Gross, Derek Neal, Don Perret, Steve Zabreski for joining me this evening. It, and for those of you who've been actually watching, um, and you who've watched later you got the on. name right. Say again, Steve. <laughs> it said you got the name right. I got the. <laughs> Thank you. <Yay. laughs> I don't try. <laughs> Those long, it's a great, but I like that this name. Um, hopefully, you guys will join me if you're in London, on my part of the world. Live, I am in person, live at Screen Rebels. I will be put on Sunday evening at this time, um, and where I am MC for Screen Rebels. Uh, the following week, we're going to be talking. I'm going to be talking. Hopefully, people will come join me, and we'll discuss *Fright Night* and perhaps ripping it to pieces. The remake. I well, we'll see what people think about those. The following week, I'm joined by Tim Dry and his publisher Simon Marshall Jones, and um, we're going to be talking about his new book *Ricochet*. Everybody, thank you very much indeed for coming along and joining us. I hope you enjoyed this, and it's been an excuse to go and look at these. Well, actually, it turned out to be two very, very good movies. Uh, we do recommend them. The, the thought is that we recommend both these movies. Good night, gentlemen. And thank you for having me. To, thank you very Bye. much. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much.